morning. We gather to celebrate the second Sunday in ordinary time. Mass is offered for the people of God. So let us gather then in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of you. As we come together as God's family, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. And so we pray together. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, who govern all things both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord said to me, you are my servant Israel in whom I will be glorified. And now the Lord says, who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him and that Israel might be gathered to him. For I am honored in the sight of the Lord and my God has become my strength. He says, it is too small a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the survivors of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations 
that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. The word of the Lord. for the Lord he inclined to me and heard my cry he put a new song in my mouth a song of praise to our God here I am sacrifice and offering you do not desire you have given me an open ear, burnt offering and sin offering you have not required. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. And I said, here I am, in the scroll of the books it is written of me. To do your will, oh my God, your law is within my heart. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. I have told the glad news of deliverance in the great congregation. See, I have not restrained my A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. From Paul, called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and from our brother Sosceles, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, together with all those who in every place call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace that God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. John the Baptist saw Jesus coming toward him and declared, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. 
I myself did not know him, but I came baptizing with water for this reason, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove and remain on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descending and remain is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. beginning of today's gospel, we have that very powerful statement, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. It's a very, very powerful statement, but there are some days when I get a little concerned about it, because in our society today, I'm not too sure how many people really know what sin is. The number of conversations I've had with young people and older people where it's like, well, Father, it's not really that bad. Or, really? When did they make that a sin? And of course, part of our problem is a lot of people were raised on love God above all things, love your neighbor as yourself. And that's as far as it's gone as their understanding of relationship with God and sin. But we forget that those two commandments from Jesus come to us from the Old Testament, the Ten Commandments. And within the Ten Commandments, there is much more to them than we actually think. When we prayed the Confidior at the beginning of Mass today, we prayed of what I have done and of what I have failed to do. Which do you think people sin more often in? What they've done or what they didn't do? And oftentimes it's in the didn't do that we fail and that we fail greatly. Did we really take care of our brothers and sisters? Did we really love the way we're supposed to? And the question remains. Do we know what sin really is? And the challenge that we have is that, you know, in the church, we have what we call an examination of conscience. And it helps us to take a look at what the sins are really, really about. It's that part about, you know, I love talking to the kids because it's like, well, I haven't murdered anybody. (laughs) Yeah, well, have you been fighting with your brothers and sisters? Yeah. Well, well, that's not a sin, Father. Uh, last time I checked it was, right? And of course the other one that a lot of people don't get is when we're killing the spirit within the other person by our gossip and by lying about somebody else or calling their name into dispute. All of that is contained in there. But if we don't do a really good examination of conscience from time to time, how do we ever sort of figure out where we're failing and where we need to improve? Within the church, it says that we have to go to the Sacrament of Reconciliation once a year. But we forget, that's called bare minimum. If the only thing you're doing is going to confession once a year, you may want to rethink that. When I was younger, they used to give us the example of the moon. Right? You know the phases of the moon? Are you with me on this one? You know what I'm talking about? That's good. Okay. Because, you see, the moon reflects the light of the sun. But you and I are called to reflect the light of Christ and be the light of Christ in the world. And frequently, we're like the full moon. We're shining really, really good. We're doing great. But then we have a problem. We seem to fall through the phases of the moon, and there are the days when we're not shining very bright at all. And so... The argument was that you should go to confession at least once a month because like the phase of the moon, you need to be brought back to a full moon. And that's the sacrament of reconciliation, getting rid of our baggage, getting rid of our sins. But also it's the recognition of our sinfulness. It's the recognition that, you know, if I'm going to be the light of Christ in the world, then I need to be aware of how my light is shining. Is it shining brightly? Is it being seen as the bright light of Christ? Or has it been 
distracted. Now, I don't know about the rest of you, but, you know, shining bright all the time is really hard. Because do you know how annoying people can be? Right? And the thing is, the distractions in our life that take us away. One of the examples that we were given when I was in the seminary, and sorry to pick on the dads here, but the example was given, dad goes to work, works really hard, concerned for his career, but he's putting in all this overtime. And it's great because it allows the family to have extras. But what do the children want from their dad? They want his time. They want his presence. In psychology, if you study it, go read it, it'll tell you that that hasn't changed. It's more important to spend time with your children than a lot of the toys that we present them with. It's your presence that is the most important thing. And the challenge that we have is do we keep our priorities straight? Do we allow ourselves to be distracted? Do we allow ourselves to get frustrated? When I'm with the kids in the schools, I always use the example of, you know, how often does the priest have to go to confession? Well, usually right after a school mass. <laughs> because one of the things that happens is the little people, I'm supposed to be praying, but those little people, they can be very, very distracting. Do you know how many children between the age of kindergarten and grade six pick their noses regularly? And it is very distracting when you're celebrating Mass. And of course, I'm supposed to be focused on my prayer. And so when I'm distracted during the Mass, that's a sin. And it needs to be taken care of. John Paul II was known for going to the confession weekly and sometimes even daily. And they asked him once what he found necessary to go and confess. Like, you're the Holy Father. What does the Holy Father have for sins? In the case of John Paul II, his answer was, to those that much has been given, more is demanded. And his number one example was, I forgot to thank the kitchen staff. I didn't say please when I asked my secretary to do some work. I forgot to thank the people around me. We all were raised to say please and thank you. But how often do we forget to? How often do we just forget? And the thing is, in the case of the priest, the bishop, the pope, much more is demanded. And I'm pretty sure that, you know, there's at least one or two of you here that during the Mass get distracted. And the thing is, but if I'm distracted, that's even worse. And so there is that need for reconciliation. I was out the other night for supper and with some friends and there was a table of teachers just over from me. And they wanted to know what it would cost to do a group confession of retired teachers. <laughs> I suggested a 25 gallon cask of scotch would be a good starting place. One, you can't do a group confession. But the other part of it is, is as the conversation went on, one of the people looks at me and goes, and so Father, when was the last time you were at confession? And of course, okay, it was nine days on Wednesday, that's 10, 11, 12, 13 days ago. Why? We just went through the Christmas season. Do you know how annoying the Christmas season can get? Do you know how distracting the Christmas season can get? Do you know how easy it is to lose track of your priorities? where you realize that you really weren't putting God first in your life? And we fail. And I figure if I can fail, you can fail too. And so how do we get ourselves back? How do we get back to that full moon? And the thing is, it's not about, you know, horrendous sins or horrible sins. It's oftentimes in the little things that we chip away at our relationship with God. Do you know the number of people that have told me that you don't have to go to church on Sunday to be a good Christian? And the thing is, it's like, it's the Sabbath. Keep holy the Sabbath. 
When do we give praise and thanks to God? When do we give time to God? Make God a priority in our lives. And the challenge that we have is, do we get there? And do we get there early enough to be properly prepared to celebrate the sacrament, the Eucharist? One of my confrères, Brother Priest, um, you would really, really love him. I keep thinking I should bring him here for a while because he doesn't let anybody leave the church until seven minutes after the Mass is over because they all need to pray, kneel down and pray in thanksgiving for the gift of the sacrament they've received. And I asked him, I said, so how's that working in your parish? And he says, well, Father, if you lock the doors, it works not bad. <laughs> but there again, what's our priority? Is God really first in our lives? Or are we just trying to get through something? Yes, I went to church. Yes, I showed up. But I showed up late and I left early. Well, I don't know about the rest of you, but if I invited you for supper and you showed up late and you left early, I'm not inviting you again. Now, I'm human. Jesus is divine. He's going to keep on inviting you. But sometimes it begs the question of what I have done and what I have failed to do. Do I really make Christ first in my life? Am I that full moon shining brightly? Or am I half a moon or a quarter of a moon? Or have I lost the light entirely? At the end of the day, each of us needs to do an examination of conscience. Each of us needs to look at our own lives. I can't look at it for you. I can bug you. I can poke you. I can prod you. I can remind you. But the final work is yours. And each of us has to look at our own lives and ask ourselves, do we really behold the Lamb of God? And do we really celebrate and rejoice in the one who came to take away our sins? Do we celebrate and rejoice in our salvation? Do we recognize that we are redeemed? The beginning of the Mass, we tell each other we are sinners in need of God's mercy and forgiveness, but we are also saints. By his suffering, death, resurrection, we have been sanctified, we have been redeemed. Do we let our light shine as a saintly people? Yes, I'm a sinner in need of God's mercy and forgiveness, but I am also a very small S, saint, by his suffering, death, and resurrection. I am redeemed. I have been saved. Do I live in the joy and the happiness to give praise and worship to the one who has saved me? to stand and make our profession of faith as we pray the Nicene Creed together. And again, I remind you, when we come to the part and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man, we make a profound bow for those words. And so let us pray together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Mindful of our calling from God, let us confidently bring our petitions to him. For the church, may God send abundant laborers to tend and serve in his vineyard. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of nations, may God keep them faithful to their responsibilities to uphold the dignity and sanctity of human life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those burdened by poverty or hunger, May God look graciously upon their every need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this faith community, may the love of Christ guide our every word and deed. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in this faith community discerning a vocation to the priesthood or religious life, may they be confident in our love, support, and prayers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, especially Pat Kruzny and Beth Royer, may Christ's eternal light shine upon them and grant them eternal rest. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, hear and kindly answer the prayers we bring to you. We make our prayer through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This time, if the children have coins for the Holy Childhood Jar, it would be a good time to bring them forward. For through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Yes. Be God. Prayer. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, wash away my iniquities, cleanse us of all of our sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And Lord, accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift 
up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you know it belongs to our boundless glory that you came to aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall may become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs as we acclaim. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race, and to always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, who when as once for the disciples and so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink of it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross, to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, renew your church throughout the world by the light of the gospel. Strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people, together with Francis our Pope, William our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, that in a world torn by strife, your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. 
Remember our brothers and sisters who fall asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. They are in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints. We shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. To him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Pour on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's pray the prayer to St. Michael together. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince, the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan, and the other evil spirits who prowl about the world for the ruin of souls. 
Amen. The parish pastoral council meeting is this Wednesday, January 18th at 7 p.m. here at Assumption. Bishop McGratton will be here to address the parish council and the parish. There is a Corpus Christi planning meeting on Thursday at 7 p.m. All are welcome. More information is in the bulletin. That's in the hall, right, Julie? Upstairs, upper meeting room. The net team is back and junior high youth group will begin again this coming Wednesday. And the senior high group will begin next Sunday. Details are in the bulletin. Grocery cards are available at the back of the church, I believe. Yes, I see a hand waving. And if you'd like to join the CWL for coffee and fellowship in the hall after mass, they're right next door. The Lord be with you. And with your Thank you very much. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth and proclaim the gospel by your life. Thanks be to God. Thank you all very much for coming. Have a wonderful week. God bless you. See you.